I put in a radon mitigation system in my house by myself. I'd say conservatively it cost me like 350 bucks, maybe 400 bucks tops. I think you could get this installed for maybe around a thousand bucks. Um, so that's the financials. Why'd I do it? Um, I spray foamed my house by myself, like my rim joist and my attic floor, so I made my house really tight. Um, 575 cubic feet per minute at 50 pascals. I got that number using a blower door. So your home, if you have not air sealed it, um, rayon's probably not a big issue because you have so much natural leakage or you have natural infiltration and exfiltration of air that your radon levels are probably pretty low. They need to be below four, uh, I think it's parts per million, don't quote me on that, but four is the number. Um, and, uh, and if they're above that, you need to like, you're supposed to take action according to like the EPA. So what you can do is you can go on Amazon, you can get a short term test kit, they're like 15 or 20 bucks. And um, if that thing comes back as high, I recommend getting a second test kit or doing what I did was I bought the electronic Corentium um, radon air monitor for 125 bucks and that runs on batteries and now it's down in my basement permanently and it just gives me a one day average, a seven day average and a lifetime average like since it's been on. So I use that when I come down here just to check on stuff to make sure that my radon levels are under control. So like I said, if you have a, um, a loose house that's not airtight, do a test and you probably won't have an issue. If you have a tighter house like I do, you might want to do a test and see if you have an issue. Now, um, some mistakes that I made in my install. My biggest mistake was um, I had to go to Home Depot and I had to rent a hammer drill um, and the bit. The, the drill was like 50 bucks and the actual bit that you have to rent to go with the drill is like another 25 bucks. You get like a 12 hour rental or something for that price. And I had to drill through five inches of concrete, which is my concrete slab. Now I went and I picked the spot uh, that was, you know, like nine inches or seven inches from my uh, foundation wall that was over in the corner of the house. And then I started drilling, right? Well, what I should have done is I should have taken a, a much smaller bit, you know, like that big or a quarter inch or something, like a, re a really small one. And I should have drilled a pilot hole first through my concrete slab to make sure that there's nothing below the slab. I ended up hitting like my concrete footing or something, or I hit something else that was concrete below my concrete slab, okay? So I couldn't go down as deep with all the excavation as I wanted to. I was like, I already drilled the hole, screwed, I'm not drilling another hole, I'm just gonna leave this, I'll dig it out and we'll be, we'll be fine. But what I recommend for you to do is, again, get a smaller uh, drill bit and drill in multiple locations so that you know that you're not gonna hit something um, once you dig down or w once you excavate um, below the slab. So that's my first big point, please, please do that. Um, secondly, um, when you are connecting the Schedule 40 PVC stuff, um, you need to like, I, I bought the uh, red or the uh, orange and the purple like PVC cleaner and glue. And when you're putting that stuff on there, um, you need to like really push it together hard, okay? So it helps to have two people when you're pushing that stuff together, particularly when you're pushing the horizontal piece through through the uh, rim joist, so one piece of it's hanging outside, the other piece is in, inside. When you're connecting like the horizontal piece to the um, to the up up and down piece, you're going to use an elbow there. And if you're just trying to push the elbow on by holding on to, that, to the other side, you like you're not strong enough to really get it on there. So you gotta have someone outside the house holding onto that pipe so that you can really jam that elbow on there nice and tight so it goes all the way onto the pipe, okay? So use two people when um, assembling the, the, the PVC. Um, and my third uh, tip or just thing from experience is that the hardest part of this whole thing was uh, drilling the concrete hole through the uh, 
through the concrete slab, and then the second hardest part was drilling through the rim joist. Honestly, when I was drilling through the concrete slab, I had this image of like a jackhammer and it, and it being like super bumpy and jiggly and dust going everywhere and like it being super loud. Um, but actually, the drill that I used was like a Makita that I got from Home Depot, right? And it was actually pretty smooth. It was kind of like riding in a Cadillac with like really smooth suspension, right? I just took my time, I turned on the power, pressed the trigger and went nice and slow and it just slowly made its way right right through the concrete. It was actually kind of cool. I, I, you know, overcame my fear of doing that and I feel much more confident doing it a second time. So, um, it's not that tough, really. The tool kind of does all the work. Just make sure that you're going into the hole straight. A um, couple other uh, just tips for you. Um, I would recommend dry fitting all of the PVC pieces together before you connect them and like actually putting it in place, like putting it into the hole and through the rim joist and put on all the elbows to make sure everything is good, then go back and put on the cleaner and the glue and glue, glue everything up. Uh, second tip, um, make sure that before you end up putting in a system, do some radon testing with those kits that I mentioned and then get another sort of test to continually monitor the situation. You know, it's like 125, 150 bucks. Your health is worth it. Below my five inch concrete slab, I have sand, okay? I, I don't have gravel, it's just sand. And sand is uh, uh, not as porous as crushed gravel is. So I had to get a stronger fan that was able, that had stronger suction to pull all the air through that dense material and up out of the house above, above grade. So if you have an older house, you might have sand underneath your concrete slab like I do. If you have a newer house, it's probably gravel, in which case uh, you need a fan that is less powerful and also, to your benefit, uses less uh, energy and hence costs less to run. My fan costs me about 15 bucks a month to run. My fan runs 24-7. And I'd be lying if I said it was the quietest thing in the world because it's not. Um, uh, also, um, there are low voltage fans that have come out by some companies, but not all the low voltage fans, uh, or I could not find one that would work for my specific situation where I have that really dense material underneath my slab. So if you've got gravel, you're in luck. You can spend more money for the low voltage fan, but then it ends up using uh, less money each month because it doesn't need that much power to run. So good, good for, for you. Um, also, my concrete walls are eight inches thick. 